Welcome, welcome. Hi, everybody. We are glad to be here and we're excited to show you our new ideas for summer dresses. That's our topic today and we've got some really fun suggestions where you can really create, I think, an unlimited amount of dresses of what you want. You can really, we're just going to give you all the keys and then you can unfold them as you decide you want to. And this is the end of May and we do, we are going to tonight follow our little traditional format and then we're going to change it up. Since it's June, middle of the year, we're going to do a little change up, but that's not till next time. You'll see next time how we do that. But for this time, we'll follow our traditional questions, answers. And like I said, we're happy to be here. It's beautiful weather here in Dallas. I know we've gotten tornadoes, we've gotten floods, we've gotten just about everything so far this year, but tonight so far is good. So we're grateful for that. Hello, how would you suggest filing or storing pattern pieces from two similar patterns? I'm going to make this sheath dress using the collar and sleeve from 575. I've got so many pieces on my table. What I do, and I've got over 100 patterns, obviously, as you all know, and the system really, really works for me, is, and I don't have my hanging, is why I got those pattern hangers. Those pattern hangers work incredible. So in all of those pattern hangers, what I've got is you just, you can take a little hole, and you can actually just take your scissors and just put a little hole in each of the pieces, and I hang them numerically. Okay, and put the envelope with them, put the envelope in a Ziploc bag, and I hang the Ziploc bag and, and everything right on that hanger, and they're numeric. All right, so then you'll have our chart, and our ch um, a chart of all the patterns is on the pattern page. When you first click on the pattern page, go to the bottom of that pattern page, and it'll say, print out our PDF catalog. So I would do that and put that at the beginning and you can I mean I'm I'm not assuming you don't have other pattern companies clearly but you can put ours in one space and then the next ones and you could do this with every, all of them but anyway print out our catalog have it at the beginning and then circle the ones you have and they'll be in the order on the paper and they'll be in the order in the closet I have them in a hanging closet so then like today where I'm taking this top and this bottom then I just go in, that one's in numeric order, this one's in numeric order. I put all the pieces that I need on the table, but the ones I don't need, I leave on the hangers just like right off to my table. And so after I've made the garment, I put them back on the pieces they belong to and put them back in numeric order of what they belong to. And that way you can, you can, you know, swap and trade all over the place, which is obviously what I do. And obviously we're going to do that tonight. And I think, and even when I've, made adjustments to the pattern like if I make a variation that I show you all I save that variation because many times I'll go back and use that same variation because I really like it and I don't have to do it again I've done all the work so that saves a lot of times too so hopefully that helps I think those pattern hangers are clearly the way to go otherwise you're folding unfolding stuffing envelopes that is like gonna take you forever to me that takes a lot of time those pattern hangers are really wonderful just for that how would you make the, the neck smaller on Sophia's dress with all of the different pieces? Well, the pieces really don't make a difference. The neck being smaller, really what you're saying is uh, you're going to take the shoulder seam and go more towards center front. So that's only on the front and the back. The rest of the pieces don't even matter. They won't even be affected. But at the shoulder seam, where the shoulder seam goes up, um, I don't have a regular shoulder seam here because I, I don't have a, that type of pattern. But where the shoulder seam goes up, just take it towards center front and take it in as far as you want it to go. Now be careful with that because I don't think they're really broad in the first place. So some of you make that decision kind of by looking at them rather than making up a muslin and say, okay, I need it to be narrower. You just assume it. So, you know, be careful in that process, but take the shoulder seam, go more towards center front and then just draw it into the existing balance of the pattern. Do that on the front, do that on the back. You're good to go. Okay. Hey Peggy, could I make 116 Chanel's top as a dress? You mentioned that the bottom of Chanel's top should be tight fitted. Absolutely you can. You absolutely can, you guys. And, and the most fun thing about this webcast tonight, Summer Dresses, is there's obviously very, very, very endless of those tops that we can make into dresses. And I'm going to show you, I mean, I, I don't need to show you all of them. I'm going to show you some of them 
kind of things to think about when you combine them. Because someone said to me one time, how come you don't have more dresses? Well, I do. I got a whole bunch of them. They're called tops. And all you do is add length. All you do is add a yoga skirt. All you do is add a straight skirt. All you do is take it straight down. Um, and they're very, very easy to do. And so you can just look through catalogs and see whether you like a dress or version. 215, Nikki's top. I didn't get that one made as a dress. That'd be a great dress. It's the one that crosses over. Well, we've made it as tops. It's a great top, but yet all I have to do is add length to it. And it makes an amazing dress. So yeah, we've got a lot of dress availability to us out there if we just think of them as adding length. Dresses are long. Which of your patterns work best for a woven tunic? Well, boy, there's just, there's not a best. There's lots of options there, a woven tunic. Um, I did, if you go back to, I think both I did it on 600 and I did both when you did um, 400 and I also did when I used the 100 pattern. Tunic basically is just a long top. It usually goes below the crotch. Usually has slits up the side and then has some kind of fastener, you know, opening of some kind to get it off and on. Um, and so, you know, the, the words there are very broadly based. I would take the style that you want and look and see what pattern is closest to it and then decide where you want from there. Some tunics slip over the head, some tunics open up the front. Um, there's zippers, they're endless, endless, endless. My, my veins keep me from wearing dresses, but I'm wanting to start. Any idea for covering my legs during summer? I'm 66 years old, tall and average weight. Well, I honestly am not a believer in covering anything that you're uncomfortable with. That's just me. I mean, I, I think that we are more uncomfortable than people are the, who look at us, number one. There's a ton of self-tanners on the market. I could get self-tanners and make them a little darker if I'm uncomfortable with that. Um, these days, at least in Dallas here, there's vein clinics all over. I can get my veins shot. That's actually healthy for you. But even if you don't want to do any of that, just don't do anything. And you could make like a ankle length and do slits up the side so that you feel covered but you still have that feel of a summery dress. You could make it below the knee or a little bit be farther below the knee and still do a little slit again so that you're comfortable. I'm going to show you this dress which is elastic here and you could make this all the way down to the ground. You know the, the fabric is actually long enough to where you can make the dress as long as you want it to be. I, I think dresses are just wonderful for the summer. I think they're flattering. I think they're, I think they make us feel beautiful. I, maybe I'm only speaking for myself, but they're just fun. So make them long, throw them on with sandals or with whatever shoes you can wear and enjoy them. And then just maybe put slits up the side or a slit up the back or something that where it feels like it's summery to you um, and will give you movement and you'll enjoy it and where you might feel like your legs are comfortable and they um, they'll be covered or as much as you want them to be. I have 1900 fitted already. Could I make the same changes if I make 1500? I mean yes, yes and no. <laughs> yes basically the shoulder seam, the sleeve is the same I mean the shoulder slope, I'm sorry, the sleeve is the same um, the darts are a little different and so they might cause a little bit of a difference. It would depend on what changes you made to 1900. Whenever somebody asks me that it makes me a little bit nervous because it depends on what changes you made. But they are off the same base and so yes 1500 came first and I took 1500 and made 1900. There's always some tweaks when you're doing that um, but I would say yes take 1900 make 1500, do the tweaks, make 1500, and then do a muslin. The goal here is when you're going from one pattern to another, to make the tweaks like with jacket to jacket, make the changes that you've made on one pattern to another, and then make up a muslin. Because as we do this more and more, you won't have to make up that muslin number one. You'll be able to see what the shoulder angle should look like. You'll, be, you, you'll know your red flags versus the pattern. 
you'll know what to watch for and that's the goal so in the beginning don't look at it as a way not to make the muslin look at it a way as to still make the muslin still check yourself but make the changes prior to making the muslin so that the muslin will be very close just be patient in that process i would strongly recommend you be patient in that process okay my left arm is two inches larger than my right arm. Should I enlarge both armholes or just one? I would make them different. I would make them different. I think that's what the beauty of sewing is, is that we can make it exactly to us. So when you make them different and you make, you're, you're gonna have to change the sleeve first and use one size sleeve and use another size sleeve for each arm. And then of course there will be a different size armhole. No one on the planet will notice that, they're, that your arms are different because the fabric will have the same amount of ease, it'll look exactly the same. So that would be my recommendation, is to make them different. When you make the armhole, I mean, when you make the sleeve, cut them both to the larger one and then just trim one down. When you make the armhole, cut them both to the smaller one and then just trim one lower. And that, th that way you can both still cut them out the same and then just trim up. The, the one, I mean, you got to be careful of this, is obviously that you trim down the lower one. And I would not trim it until you were actually sewing it so that you sure you had this armhole in this sleeve and this armhole in this sleeve because your sleeves are not reversible anymore, okay? But very easy to do, and I, I would make them different. With Amy's skirt, can I remove the center seam on both front and back? Well, Amy's skirt is 2750 um, the reason for the seam, yes, you can. I mean, the answer is yes. The ramifications are simply that um, the positioning on your fabric changes. When you position, when, when you have a skirt and you're positioning it onto the fabric, the center of the fullness should be on grain. If the center of the fullness is on grain, then the center front has some bias to it and the side seam has some bias, but neither one's bias is very much. When you take that seam away and you turn it to where it has to be on the fold, then all the bias is at the side seam and the skirt hangs differently. So it's okay, obviously with me, that you do that. Just be aware that the skirt will hang differently when you take a seam away because you have to put it on a fold. The seam in the back is there to put a zipper in. So if you're not going to put a zipper in, watch your seam allowance. Make sure you take away the right amount because on Amy's skirt, there's a one inch seam on the center back seam. So just heads up and, and be aware of that, okay? 100 is a one piece sleeve. Can I use it in any blouse pattern? Yes, so when we numbered these patterns, we actually, thought we might have more patterns one day, <laughs> which worked. Um, and so the numbering of the patterns where anything below a thousand is a blouse armhole of a knit and a blouse armhole of a woven. So any woven will fit in any other woven, anything below 1000. Any knit will fit in any other knit. Again, anything below 1000 that has a, obviously a set in sleeve. So all your knit sleeves will fit in all your knit armholes below 1000 thousand and all your woven sleeves will fit in your woven armholes anything below 1000 so you have quite a variety of sleeves your knit sleeves you don't I mean you just have your set in sleeve but you have your woven one piece you have your woven two piece you have your woven two piece with cuff you have your woven two piece without cuff you know you've you've got quite a few variables 900 709 you know you've got quite a selection. Obviously, because I mean to, when I do another woven, I'll put a different sleeve in there so that you have this repertoire of sleeves. And that's thanks to my mom. She said, make sure those sleeves are mix and match so I can take it from this pattern and put it in this pattern. I said, gotcha, mom, I'll do that. All right, I wanted to make Casey's 112, Casey's wife over top. My fabric has 60 inch wide and the front pattern didn't fit. Should I cut the extra inches off in the front in order to fit the width of the fabric, yes. Or you can put a seam. You can run it lengthwise and put a seam right at center front, right where that fold is. I don't think I ever put it on the fold. I think I always do a seam because when I'm actually putting it on and draping it, um, I know exactly where the middle is. So it's really helpful to have a seam there at the front. And also, another webcast, and I, I meant to grab it tonight and I didn't, 
I've put a zipper there right at that seam so that if you put it in the back of your head, it doesn't show, the zipper doesn't show, but if you unzip it, you can do different things with it. So just an idea. Okay, all right, are we good? Okay, so we're gonna do summer dresses tonight. The number one thing that I think is really important is the terminology because what I recognize and I, I need you to understand is that, you know, when, when we say a t-shirt, we get a clear picture as to what we mean. We mean a knit body that is da 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 da. When we say a blouse, we get a fairly clear picture. It, it almost connotates to us the type of fabric that's used, um, t-shirt versus blouse. However, when we say dress, dress is extremely generic in its terminology. Now I've said this before, but I need to make sure you understand this. So when we say dress, we are saying, or, or tonight, what I want to kind of keep in mind is we are saying we have a t-shirt dress, a blouse dress, or a jacket dress. So what changes on all of those is this good old little armhole. And of course the sleeve, if we have the sleeve, both of those things are going to change and go together. Okay. So when we say t-shirt dress, then we want to think about what do we want the bottom half of that t-shirt dress to look like when we say, you know, for instance, the, um, when we say a, a blouse dress, we're talking about the shirt dress. The shirt dress is pattern 600, which is the classic blouse just made long into a dress. I've done that with the classic blouse. I've done that with 400. Several of those blouses I've taken and just made long. And when we want them, if we want them to have a sleeve, they have a blouse sleeve. However, if we want them to be sleeveless, then we have to come in with our sleeveless template and put it on because generally when you have a blouse sleeve and you decide for it to go sleeveless, it will be too large. So we have to either come in with a knit sleeve or our sleeveless armhole in order to fix it and make it right. Now, because we put up something a little while ago, I'm going to remind you all that it's up and it is called, oh, Brett, help me on this one, under features, the chart. I call it the Brett chart, but I never know what it's really called. Uh, finding your measurements. Finding my measurements. Finding my measurements. I always call it the Brett chart because he put it up and I didn't know he put it up. And then everybody started thanking me. And I said, well, anyway, finding your measurements. So I'm surprised at how I'm going to mention it for a little while because I want everyone to be aware of those. They will answer a lot of questions for you. So what Brett did is he kind of made an Excel spreadsheet, sort of. And what you can do is you need to go through and answer, fill in the chart. You've got to go through and fill in the chart. Too many of you don't understand um, the answers that need to be in the chart. And therefore, when you get into a project, you don't know what you want. And you make mistakes because you don't know what you want. So I'm gonna call attention to the Brett chart to finding my measurements and make sure you print that out. Again, I was in California Friday morning. We had a workshop and it's wonderful. It was so nice to see you all and meet with you all. But many of you did not know what that chart was, finding my measurements. Especially it's important when we do dresses because dresses are t-shirt dresses, blouse dresses and jacket dresses. Okay, so when you look at a dress pattern, you got to figure out which one of those it is or which one you want it to be. It actually doesn't have to be what it is, but it has to be what you have intended for the fabric. I hope we're all on the same page. Okay? Okay. So we're going to start tonight with the simplest of dresses. I'm not even sure you can call it a dress, but you don't need a pattern for it. And it's, it's every once in a while I find this elasticized um, fabric and I love it. I just absolutely love it and I never tire of it. And this one I found new. It's a very light cotton rayon. It's really beautiful. There's one seam, you guys. You can put it at the side. You can put it at the back. You simply wrap it around you. Decide how much you want. Um, decide how long you want it. And bam, with one seam, you've got a dress. So... I can't think of a cooler summer little dress for everybody. I use it for a, a bathing suit cover-up, to be quite honest. And then if I want it to look a little bit better, 
I just put a little wrap on top of it. And there's a whole bunch of variations of wraps out there that you can do, but they all look amazing. I, again, was out of town this weekend and I had this little dress with me because the day was going to be so long and we were, I mean, what we were doing in the morning, what we were doing at night were so far apart from each other, but one dress kind of covered the whole entire day and I made it long and I made it, you know, I just wore it with sandals and, uh, you know, it just worked. So it's great if you're traveling and you've got a wide variety of events you're going to and, you know, you need maybe a little wrap just to keep warm at night, but it's really hot in the day, yada, yada, yada. Um, it really works well. So that is adorable, cute. You won't have any fitting issues. You wrap it around you. It's a negative ease. You guys got it, right? Okay, the next one I want to go to then is 4014. I, I absolutely love this pattern. I love this dress, Shelly's dress. So the way I made it different in this particular case is by laying it on the fabric. And I just absolutely thought this fabric was beautiful the way it lays out. I didn't make any pattern changes at all. I wanted it to be just like it was. Um, but what I did do is how I positioned the pieces. And because there's a, a border in the middle and I'm sorry, the borders are on both sides. It's a dual border and it's solid in the middle. You're going to lay your pieces out accordingly. Now, the one thing I would warn you to be careful of is there's only stretch in one direction. So your pieces have to run, run lengthwise, but you can still create a really fun border and you can see the pieces just meld into one another to where it looks like the dress was kind of made for the fabric. I, I love this combination. It's just really, really pretty. No changes. I mean, I did a three quarter sleeve. The dress is extremely easy to sew. It's fun to sew. I haven't made the dress for a little while. And as I was following my own directions that I wrote, the dress just goes together beautifully. It's flattering. It looks great on every body type out there. It has really soft gathers along the side. We put it in a little package so that you guys could, um, you know, get a little discount on it. And this is a new fabric. We just put this fabric up. It has also, um, it's built in, it's got a built in facing in the back to it. it. It's just a really beautiful pattern. It was this original, in fact, they're still on. There's, I, I saw them this season for summer. Nick and Zoe is the line that I copied off this, Shelly's dress, and they keep, the pattern works, the style works, it's a great, and so I've seen it just repeating itself over and over. They're just switching up the fabrics. This is meant for a, a knit body. So this is a knit armhole and a knit sleeve. So this would be a t-shirt dress is kind of how you would describe it in your mind. If you wanted to do it out of woven, keep in mind that it would be difficult to get it off and on because the sleeve is too small. But if you wanted to do a woven sleeve, you could do that, but you'd have to come in with a woven sleeve and then go from there. But also you'd have to, um, it stretches over the bust to get through the waist. You'd probably have to put some kind of invisible zipper in the side keep it in a knit. Unless you're dying to do it in a woven, I think I'd keep it in a knit. Okay, can we answer questions for you? How much yardage do you need to make the black and white dress? Just a, a yard. It, the, the fabric is gathered uh, at the selvage and then runs, you know, the, the gatherers run along the selvage. So if you, if a yard will go around you, a yard is all you need. That's it, that will do it for you. And then you can determine whatever length you want, it's 60 inches. But most of us are not 60 inches from our bus to the floor, unless you're really tall. But it's also a cute skirt. It also makes a really cute skirt. But there are some of those that you've seen that they take them in a skirt and they make both skirts and dresses out of them, depending on where they pull them up to. I think that's a cute idea also. Okay, I'm copying a cow neck tank from past webcast. Okay, I wanted to put a seam down center front on 550 because it really made for a drapey cowl. Should I or shouldn't I? Well, I mean, I can't tell you what you should do, but you don't need a center front seam. I think, I think maybe what you're asking, I'm trying to read between the lines here. Um, a cowl will drape without a center front seam. It doesn't need a center front seam to drape. A cowl will drape by how it's positioned onto the fabric. It's the fabric that's actually doing the draping, not the pattern. So it doesn't need a seam to help it drape. It will drape all by itself. Now I'm not even sure that's what you're asking, but maybe that helps you answer your own question by just knowing that the cowl itself will drape 
um, you know, it doesn't need, it doesn't need a seam. I think you're thinking a seam will maybe give it weight. It doesn't need it. Okay. How we doing? All right, good. Okay, so let's go. Now, keep in mind that when I'm, this dress will take you about 10 minutes to make. <laughs> This, now this one will take you 30 minutes. You gotta hem it, you know, it'll take you a little more time. This will take you about an hour. So I was trying to go from difficulty as to what would be easier, harder, more time, less time, whatever. I'm gonna go over to this one. First off, I love it. I just absolutely love this dress. Um, I, think the fa I think it's a fabric pattern combination home run. And I think so simply because I've seen it in so many stores. It's the whole reason I bought the fabric. It's the whole reason I did the dress because I've just seen it around so much. And it's a real simplification of the pattern itself. So this is pattern number 615. It's called Kathy's Blouse, obviously made into a dress. So I only used four pieces. I used the front, I used the back, I used the sleeve, and then I use the tie. This is actually the tie. And I'm going to show you the changes I made. It's, well, it's called the neck ruffle, not the tie. I'm sorry. The tie I left off altogether. And the bottom of the sleeve I left off altogether. Because the first thing I did is I wanted to make... Now, again, even if you wear this up, you don't have to wear... You can wear it on your shoulders or you can wear it up. You can wear it both ways. I'm going to show you kind of what to watch out for. We've seen this quite a bit in summer. It, it really is a very stylish top right now. Um, the ruffle is just meant to be narrow and so obviously what I did is made it much wider and the ruffle in this particular case because this fabric is a border print I made it the width of the border so this particular ruffle measures eight inches wide and because the ruffle became the sleeve or I wanted it to become the sleeve I didn't want even the sleeve or the details of the sleeve to be showing. I didn't want any of that. I wanted it much simpler than that. And again, this was a dress I had seen at Neiman's and I was copying that dress. So the sleeve is under here because it has to be because this is a, um, this is a kimono. So, or a raglan, I'm sorry, it's a raglan. So it has a sleeve underneath there, but what you're gonna do is you're just going to cut it off shorter so that once you sew that sleeve on and the ruffle comes over or that neckband now it won't even show the sleeve that's underneath it's got it's got to be there because it's a part of the neckline that goes all the way around but you don't really want it to show unless you want it to but what I was doing in this particular case is I didn't want it to show all right so then what I did is I just took the front piece and the back piece and I I just took and put it up on me and figured out how many inches additionally I wanted to add. And the border's at the bottom, so I, you can see the border's here sewn on and the border's at the bottom. So the fabric is wide enough that you can put it at the bottom of the dress and then cut it off and make it the ruffle at the top too. So I'm using borders that are on both ends of this fabric. I really love this project. And this dress, I mean it just didn't even take me an hour, hour and a half. It was really, really quick. So when you, the darts are all incorporated up into the sleeve, and again, you can kind of wear it off if you decide you want to. You can kind of do it either way. It's kind of a flirty, cute little dress. I did elastic at the waist. I put a belt over it just to give it a, a pinch. You wouldn't have to. If you didn't feel like you wanted that contrast at the waist or you wanted a thinner belt, you could just do the elastic and you could completely leave it like it was. When you're adding length to the bottom, make sure that you are dividing because you've got two pieces and those two pieces are cut on the fold that they're wide enough for your hips. If not, just add it at the side and then bring it right back into the sleeve where, where I did. So the sleeve was shortened on this and then I also widened it. So what I did is I added an inch here and an inch here. So I cut down to nothing, I cut down to nothing and added, added, so that was actually four inches that I added. And then I added uh, actually a little bit more, I added six inches on the ruffle. So this neck ruffle, it's, it's on the fold. I actually cut it wider, the eight inches, but I actually also added six inches out this way. So it was much wider. 
and and that I did because I wrapped the ruffle around me to make sure that I could pull this down and that it would still have enough width to go over my shoulders versus up like that it takes more to go this way but but it can be worn either way but it has to have some added in or else it can't be pulled down over the shoulder okay and this comes down the eight inches comes down over the bust it comes down it works as a sleeve I just love it very simple to do but again all I did here was added to the sleeve and the ruffle in this particular case and then I shortened the sleeve length and I lengthened it to a dress that's not too many changes. That's easy, isn't it? Do you guys see that as easy? I love this. Love it, love it, love it. And then if you want to, you can wear, we've got all those stretch linings in now. It'd be great little um, tank slip underneath if you wanted to put a little tank slip underneath. Peggy, can you take off the black knit cover up and show us the black and white print dress? Yeah, but it's just, um, it just is, it's the old tube dresses. If you remember the old tube dresses, that's all it is. So there's no sleeve to it. It just literally comes under the armhole. Um, I, I, the reason I did these little cover-ups is I want you to see here in a minute that if you do some really fun, you know, pick your favorite colors for the summer. Like obviously you all know mine's black <laughs> and obviously white. And then I did a like a salmon color back here. Then you can mix and match them all. And I think that's really fun when you travel because I'll take one dress but two different cover-ups. So the first time, even if I'm wearing it in the daytime, I'll do a little more colorful color-up. And then if I'm going into nighttime, maybe I'll throw on a black just to kind of subdue it a little bit. But I like to have a cover-up because it's cold. Again, when I go into the AC, it's a little bit cold. On a two-way stretch fabric, does it matter which way the pattern grain is placed, especially in Casey's top? It does not. There is no grain line in knits. So you can take that thing and put it in any direction you want. Um, it more in a knit, you want to really pay attention to the fabric and if it's directional or if the print on the fabric. Um, if that doesn't matter, then no, it doesn't matter which way. If you put it grain or cross grain, those two are meaning one's going with the yarn and one's going across the yarn, but you're, you're asking me for a knit. Knits don't have a grain, so no, it doesn't make any difference. Okay, only if it matters again with the print. Are we okay? Okay, so then I wanted to do the sheath dress. I've done the sheath dress. I've done it on a let's sew. So I just wanted to bring it back so that you could see what we did with it. Remember that it's a great dress for the summer. So I didn't want to not remind you that the sheath dress is great. I take away my shoulder pad. I made it sleeveless. There's several different little things, jackets, whatever I could wear over this but it's really just a great summer little dress. I would remind you to make the side panels darker, a different fabric, because it makes you look a third as wide. It's a home run. Since I've done this dress, I've had several women in workshops say to me, oh, I can't wear a sheath dress. Everybody can wear a sheath dress. Everybody can wear a sheath dress. And everybody should be wearing a sheath dress because no question, it's your best friend. Hands down, across the board, promise I promise it's your best friend okay so I just wanted to bring this to kind of remind you don't forget that sheath dress now the sheath dress pattern when we talked about our t-shirt dress our blouse dress and our jacket dress that sheath dress is a jacket dress so that means um, it's got a two-piece sleeve it's got shoulder pads I want to take those shoulder pads away if I'm doing sleeveless but the rest of the dress is not going to change it doesn't matter if it's a jacket or a blouse you know the circumference it's just going to change up and it's then whether I want a woven or a knit. If I want a woven and because this center panel was a woven, I have to find I have to put an opening in it and that's when I put this little zipper in at the shoulder. If it's a knit, I wouldn't need any opening. I could just slip it literally over my head and not worry about it. And those 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 summer dresses that are sheath dresses and knits, they're just a home run. They're great, they're comfortable, they're quick, they're easy. Just watch your armhole. Make sure you have on your sleeveless armhole because once an armhole's too low, it's really hard to raise. All right, so just watch that. So you could easily make five or six dresses in no time or all, because I did. If you're making the sheath dress 4200 and knit, do you need to use a knit armhole or just a smaller armhole from the pattern? No, use your knit template. No, if you're, and yeah, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> it depends on if it's got a sleeve. If you're making the sheet dress 
and knit. Do you use a knit armhole? You've got four armholes. You've got a sleeveless, a knit, a blouse, and a jacket. So if you're making it a knit, does it have a sleeve? Then you should use your knit armhole. If it's sleeveless, you should be using your sleeveless armhole. Okay, just be aware of that. My sleeveless and my knit are the same. So I just have my t-shirt and that works. But if not, I'd have to go up to a larger armhole. Okay, all right. For the sheath dress, did you use a knit armhole or a smaller armhole from the pattern? I used my sleeveless armhole, my knit armhole. But I hate to say knit armhole because your knit armhole and your sleeveless may not be the same. Mine are the same. But don't use a smaller armhole. Use your armhole templates from what you have. Go back to that chart and find your sleeveless armhole and use your sleeveless armhole for your sheath dress if it's sleeveless. If it's made out of knit and you're going to put a sleeve in it, then use your knit armhole and your knit sleeve. Okay? All right. Okay. So I had a request from a customer to, um, to mix up a couple of patterns. So she wanted to know, the question really was, that she wanted to take, she was doing this for her daughter, and she wanted to take the halter, which is 619, Jessica's favorite halter, and she wanted to combine it to the yoga skirt. And so what we get is this. I'm going to pull this up just a little bit. Well, maybe I'm not going to pull it up. I thought I was going to pull it up. There we go. Okay. So the goal here, I'm going to pull this one back. The goal here, and it's going to apply in lots of what we're going to do, is to take a top and put it with a skirt. And that's really what I want to spend some time on because that will give you just an, gosh, it'll just free you up to take all kinds of tops and put them on all kinds of bottoms. So I just love this. I, I don't, I mean, she made it for her daughter. I made it for myself. <laughs> I made it for myself because I love this open exposed. And I even like it then when you put a jacket on or when you put a little cover up on because it shows it's a halter and you can see a bit of peaking of the skin at the neckline, but you're still covered. I just really like it. I love the look. I just really, really like it. Very contemporary, very summery looking. All right, so what I did in this case, I really just did two changes. Three, sorry, three. On the halter itself, you're going to have to shorten the halter because the halter is, is longer. So what I knew was I already knew that I wanted the yoga skirt below my waist. I already knew the yoga skirt fit. I wasn't worried about that. Let me grab this piece here. This is my yoga skirt. Now, the, I will say one thing I love about this halter pattern is the halter pattern has a bra built into it. So there's elastic in here because it's got a self-contained bra. And again, I love that. I think that in today's, the younger girls are wearing bra straps and they're showing and they don't, you know, they just, that's okay and that's okay. Just for me, I just like it to be a little bit cleaner and I don't like that. So that was the whole purpose of building in that bra. It's got nice elastic. It's got two inch wide elastic right under the bus. So it gives... A lot of nice support because this is holding up the rest of the dress. So it's it's nice in that way. So all you have to do is know how short you need to shorten this by. And so what I did is I, I knew I wanted two inches of blousing. I knew I wanted the blousing to go over the waistband of the yoga skirt. And so I just measured myself from the base of the neck to that point, to my waist. And then I added two inches for blousing and then I added just a little bit more because too little blousing is not good and too much I could always take it away so that's how I ended up and I turned up three inches so here here's there's my halter and and there's the blousings included so all I did on the body is just turn up the three inches easy enough on the actual yoga skirt and I'm gonna make sure I have the back with the back because I want you to see this. The yoga skirt 
is narrower than the halter top. So I put those ones together once because they're going to have to meet. And, and most of the time, your skirt will be narrower than your top. So this is a lesson that's going to go all the way across the board. And it's a really easy thing to deal with. Just be aware of it. I added to the halter. I'm sorry. I added to the yoga skirt. I put the fronts together. And I added that it was um, three inches too narrow. And then drew it out to match the bottom. So I kind of added this whole piece in through here. You have to pay attention to how much you added because you have to add it to the waistband also because they all have to sew together. So see, here's the waistband there and there's the top. So basically then, that's the second change I did. I widened the skirt waist to equal the top because you want it to be looser. You want there to be a little bit of gathering, but you've got the elastic to do it, so it's not a big deal. So I made the yoga skirt a little bigger than what I was. The third change is that on the, uh, the band itself, you have to add that also. You have to add the additional, but you also have to add one seam allowance, one three eighths. And the reason you're gonna do that is because when you fold the band in half, which is how you're gonna sew it to the skirt. So you sew it to the skirt that way. Let's say you just got a finished skirt. The double layer is perfect because that's your casing. So all you have to do is take your casing and go right through, take your elastic and go right through the casing. The casing's already built in, but I need one more seam allowance up here so that I can actually sew the top to that double layer. And so that's all, that's all I did. I sewed the skirt to the band. I put the elastic in. And then I sewed the halter top that was finished. I did the, this part up here. I made my little band up there. I finished the halter top completely. And then sewed it to the top of the band. And that's what I came up with. It is adorable on. I'm sure you'll see it on me because it's just cute as can be. It's easy, it's quick, and it's cute as can be. It fits really well. And again, then I left these different color little tops that we can put on, leave off, kind of do whatever we want. All right. So it took me <laughs> two or three emails back to the lady who did this for me to figure out how she did it. And it's funny because... I thought to myself, it doesn't really matter how she did it. I'll just do it. But my curiosity wanted to know how she did it and, you know, what part she added and what part she took away. And she even said that her daughter liked it so much she made another one. She's actually made two, and she sent me pictures of both of them. They were both adorable. I love this fabric. I love this fabric because so many people would say, oh, the flowers are too big, the flowers are too big. They're not. They just splash everywhere. They're great. I think I called it flower power. It's just a really, it's perfect fabric. It's got great drape. It's an ITY. So it's really, it really works well for this. I think fatter, pattern fabric combination work really well. All right. Can you explain to me how you made the armhole template? Sorry, I don't quite know what to do. That's okay. All right, so this template... Gosh, I don't have a single... I'm going to have to explain it because none of the patterns that I have here tonight have armholes on them. Well, yeah, they do. Here we go. Okay, so I'll use the sheath dress as an example. So let's just say the sheath dress... I have a pattern for this sheath dress. And we're going to have to pretend a little bit here. And then you're going to actually... You don't have to pretend because you can actually put it into reality, but I have to pretend because I don't have it here. But let's just say this armhole, I love. It's on my pattern. I, I've made it up. I love the armhole. So you're going to take your armhole and trace the armhole. I mean, I, I'm tracing it onto cardboard. So if I were then to make another garment, I would put this armhole onto any pattern out there. The template is really just... Um, can you take the cover up off the dress? Yeah, but hang on. Let me just hang on one second. Let me finish this. So with the templates, you're just drawing a pattern of your armhole. 
this is actually your armhole. This, the width of this doesn't matter. It's simply um, an inch wide because it's easy to hold on to. This right here is the actual armhole. So I can take this pattern, once you get it off the armhole you like, then just take it and trace it onto cardboard, plastic, paper, I don't care what it is. Make it an inch wide. And so I can take this and put on any pattern. I can put this at the armhole and this at the side seam and I'll have the size armhole that I want to have. Is that clear enough, you guys? I don't have, you know, it's all gonna follow the French curve. You know, all your armholes are gonna follow the French curve, but if you take it off of your pattern or off of your garment, then you'll have the pattern of what you like, and you'll have a sleeve that goes with it. So for instance, my t-shirt, my one nine my t-shirt is my 195. So I took the 195, I laid it down, I traced the armhole, and my sleeve and the armhole template go together. And I can put them on any pattern that I want to make a knit armhole for. And then do the same with your blouse. My blouse is classic pattern number 600, classic blouse, sorry, number 600 classic blouse. And you can do the same with your jacket. So you have a sleeve and an armhole that go together on anything you go to make, okay? Okay, now, yes, can I take the cover off of this? Yes, I can. Just forget my blue thing down here. On the halter dress, what did you use for the neck straps? I used the fabric. They're right here. All I did was I cut, um, I just on my scraps, I cut like the length of the fabric, or I'm sorry, the width of the fabric, and I just made, I just folded it and folded it together and stitched right down the middle. So almost like a bathing suit strap is what it is. And then I just laced it right through here and then I tied it up here. And, and the nicest thing about tying it is that I can adjust it. I'm not gonna tie it long term, but short term I can adjust it um, if I want the halter to be higher toward my neck or a little bit lower, I, I can use that for an adjustment. But see, it goes all the way around. And again, I just, I did it like one inch wide and I folded the middles and then folded it again so that the ends were all inside and just stitched it right on top. And then you could, I mean, I think it'd be cute with cord stops. I think it'd be really cute with cord stops, which is why I hadn't finished it because I thought I could put little cord stops up there. And if that's too annoying, you could just tie a knot or you could sew it together and then push it right back inside to the gathers. So you could, you would never even see the end. All of those things are optional. It just depends on how decorative you want this to be. That chain link would be really cool here. And I've actually thought about putting that chain link in just because I think it'd be a really pretty little addition all the way around. And so again, if you do that, you just lace it through here and then sew it together when it comes to the length you need it to be, stitch it together, and then just slide it back in under here so the whole thing is one continuous piece. And the nice thing about making it final is then you never have to adjust it anymore. It's just permanent as to what you want it to be. Okay? All right. What pattern did you use for the orange sweater cover-up? This is 196. It's called the four-way cardi. And I like these because I like the different ways you can wear them. And I had one on over the weekend and I just got so many compliments. These were non-sewers. I got so many compliments on my little cardies. They just thought they were too cute. I love them. I just really like them. Can you pull up the halter dress at the waist to show how they are joined? Can I pull up the halter dress at the waist to show how they are joined? Well, it's a print, so I'm not sure you can see it, but here's the yoga waistband, and the skirt's joined to the bottom of the yoga waistband, and the halter's joined to the top of the yoga waistband. So, I don't know if this, with this print you can see that, but there's a two inch band going right through the middle there. Halter's joined to the top, skirt's joined to the bottom. And then there's a little blouson over that, and that's what just makes it really, really cute very flattering because it's really slimming to have that old blouson effect. The whole reason the blouson effect was created was because it was such a slimming look 
to go from the bust area to the bottom. Anything that's below a blouson makes everything below it look smaller. So that's a good thing. For me, that's a good thing. Can you explain how to do the back armhole template the same way you make the front? You make a front and a back. Yes. Perfect. Same way. Trace the armhole, make it an inch wide. Same way. Maybe we should do a video on making the templates. Can we see the back of the dress, please? I have five dresses. Which one would you like to see? The back of... You can see any back you would like. This is the back of this one. I guess maybe you want to see all of them, huh? This is the back of the halter. Now this is my dress form, so this is pretty much what it looks like on me. Is this, which one did you want to see the back of? This is the back of Shelly's. Uh, this is the back of the um, sheath dress. I showed you the back of that one. And the back of this other one is, I'll bring it back. Most of these, it's kind of funny, the back's the same as the front. That's the back of that one. Okay. Okay. What else? You ready to sew? We're a little bit early, but I'm inclined to say you've got 10 more minutes to sew if we stop now, right? Now, what questions can I help you with? It's really fun to take those tops that you love, you've made them already, you already know they fit, and then just make the bottoms. Put a yoga skirt on, put a little band on. That's the main reason I wanted to show you this one, is because that band works as a beautiful link between any top and any bottom. Because it's a casing, it's already got two layers, the, the pattern is already, you know, you fold it in half and it's already got the two layers there. Just don't forget to add a seam allowance, and then the two inch wide elastic is really contemporary. So it looks really nice and it's really easy to sew. So to my sweet customer that sent me this idea and was patient enough to keep explaining to me how she did it, thank you, I love it. I just really like it. This one to me is like in every magazine that's come out now. It's in all the stores. It's, it's you know, got that Spanish flair to it. I just love it. This embroidered cotton is beautiful. It's really beautiful. We actually have some brand new black crystals in and we don't have them up yet. But I'm going to go back and put a little more black crystals up in here to kind of give it a little more glimmer at the top than at the bottom. I think it's going to be really beautiful. So I've got a little bit more work to do on that one. Would you use the yoga skirt on Chanel's top to make a dress? Or could you make, could you use a straight skirt? I would not use Chanel, I would not use the yoga skirt on Chanel's because with Chanel's you don't want a blouson. Whenever you're going to do this yoga skirt, you're going to use a blouson. If you use a blouson with a Chanel, the Chanel will gap. So the Chanel has to have more of a straighter bottom. You could do a flared bottom, but I would not do the band. I would make it all one piece, something like this. That's what kind of makes you decide whether you're going to do two pieces or whether you're just going to extend it down. And if you don't want the blousing, you're going to, you're going to go straight down. I, and this is kind of like Chanel's top. This is a little bit like it. Crosses over on one side and the other. But anyway, you don't want the blousing if you've got a top that that has that in it. Or else the top will gape. You have, it has to be fitted more to the body. I made the cowl neck top and put in the sleeve your way. Love it. And just for whatever it's worth, it's really not my way. I appreciate that. But I copied it from the factories. It's just... A really good way to do but I, I, I understand what you say how do I narrow the neck opening as, as had to make it wider to go around my chest you mean you had to make it a larger size is that what you mean how do, I'll just answer the question to narrow the neck opening you take the shoulder seam and extend it towards center front that's all you do is take the shoulder seam keep going towards center front do it on the front and do it on the back and then just extend that it's all a design line that cowl is all design just extend it into the front just the same. Okay, so just extend the shoulder seam into the center front. Again, be careful, go slow. Just because you made a bigger size doesn't mean you need to change the neck because we make it bigger at the bust and we don't make it bigger at the neck. There's a different grade percent at the bust than there is at the neck. 
So you'll find a lot of times the bust gets bigger by a half inch while the neckline only gets bigger by a quarter, by an eighth of an inch. So just be aware of that. You, you can't assume that we make the pattern bigger everywhere equally, that you should make it smaller. So just heads up. Okay. Can you show us the zipper in the sheath dress, how it was installed? Well, what I did is I can tell you how it's installed. You may not be able to see it. But all I did was finish the neck edge and then just turned the seam under, turned the seam under and stitched it right on top of the zipper. Very simple to do. Again, I finished the armhole, finished the armhole front and back, and then just laid it on top of the zipper and just stitched it in. So if you looked at the wrong side, you the zipper would be showing on the back side. Okay? Now there are a lot of the dresses, a lot of the garments today. I saw one a little bit ago, and the dresses, the zipper is um, on top. It's on top of the garment. The tape is showing, everything about the tape is showing. I think it's really interesting. I, I kind of like it, how raw the garments are. Again, I kind of like it, but it was just right on top. I thought it looked really nice. Do you have to use a casing on the yoga skirt or can you just add elastic? Can you just attach the elastic to the fashion fabric? No, but the the yoga skirt, you want to make a casing, uh, but the yoga skirt, the band, you cut the band twice as wide already. So on the yoga skirt, when you go to make it, you fold it in half and the casing goes through there. So you fold it in half when you sew it to the skirt and you fold it in half, the casing's already been made for you. So I did make a casing. It, it is double layer on here but that's already built into the pattern. That's why what you're going to do, the seam allowance is down here, you're going to add one more seam allowance here so that you have enough to sew. And, and technically it's a seam allowance on this side and a seam allowance on this side. So that when you fold it in half, you've got a whole seam allowance on this side and a whole seam allowance on this side and you've still got two inches of width in the middle. So add a seam allowance on both sides and you're good to go. Alrighty? What kind of skirt would you recommend for making Nikki's top into a dress? I think this is how my brain works. If it's tight on the top, I don't like to make it tight on the bottom. Again, this is me. So I would want to see a fuller skirt at the bottom. Like I think Nikki's top and the yoga skirt would be really cute together. Really cute. It'd have the flare you like. Um, it'd have a little blue sawn because it's tight or, or, or don't even have the blue sawn. Just have it go straight because Nikki's top is fitted through the top and it looks really nice fitted. And then I, I don't think I take away the blue sawn. I'm going to change that. But have the band of the yoga skirt and then just go right into the yoga skirt. I think it'd be really cute to have those combination. So like this, but just have the yoga skirt, have Nikki's top on top. If you there, narrow the neck opening, if you narrow the neck opening, does that make the back opening, I have no idea what, if you narrow the neck opening, does that make the back neck opening higher? I have a scar I like to cover and have lots of necklines are too low. Um, no, it doesn't. Narrowing it just brings it in. If you want to actually make are we talking, I, I'm going to assume we're talking a cowl neck. I'm not sure, but I'm going to assume it's a cowl neck. A cowl neck is how far it's brought away from center front is what creates the drape. If you take a pattern away from center front and then bring it back because the body brings it back, it drapes low. So you'd want to cut away some of that center front. And that way it wouldn't drape as low is what you're trying to do. But a cowl back, there's not a cowl back. I'm completely confused. You can always email me Peggy at soloatpatterns.com and I can help you there. But I'm not sure. Sometimes when we're doing these webcasts, y'all are typing so fast, it's really hard to um, to get the right thing in that you want typed, which is exactly why we're going to change up this question and answer format a little bit. What we decided, let me just kind of explain how we're going to do this. Like next week, or two weeks from now, I'm sorry, next week's Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day to everybody, by the way. But anyway, in two weeks, we're going to do the June pattern of the month. And when we do that, I'm going to take all the questions that have anything to do with that pattern 
or that concept of that pattern and we'll put them all together and that way you'll have an easier time finding the questions. If tonight all the questions had something to do with dresses, you would have a much easier time finding your dress questions than every time the questions are being random coming in from all over. So we want you to email us the questions. Just, you know, Peggy at SilhouettePatterns.com. Please, in your subject matter, put sewing. Sewing something. Sewing workshops. Sewing something. Because I get so many emails that it's possible I'm deleting some of them because they say, you know, I don't know. They just, I'm not picking up on the subject and I get so many emails. So put sewing something, you know, sewing, whatever else you want, but put sewing. So then I can see that it's going to be, a, you know, something I need to pay attention to. But anyway, we can bring in the questions and then we can present the questions in a much more um, organized way to where we don't have to index them because you know they'll have something to do with dresses. Or we can put them in the FAQ page, the Frequently Asked Questions page. That's on the back page. We can put them in there. So we'll start to expand that file to where when you have a question, you can actually go to FAQ page first and then email me. If you've emailed me and if it's on the FAQ page, I'll say go to the FAQ page. And that way we'll have kind of a, an ongoing place of where you can ask questions and where you can get answers even without emailing me or waiting for responses from me. And I think that will flow. We all talked about it and we felt like that there was just some great ideas that we're going to implement, but that's just kind of a sampling of what's going to happen. Okay. All right. So are we cool with questions? I want to say to all of you, happy Memorial Day. For those of you who have lost loved ones and all these terrible wars, our hearts go out to you. Um, have a wonderful a somewhat happy Memorial Day. I know we have one particular customer that I've emailed back and forth. Her, she lost her husband um, years ago to these horrible instances. And I just, every time I read an email, I just, oh, I just twinge a little bit. And I, I feel such great empathy. But anyway, have a wonderful, safe weekend. We will see you in two weeks. We'll come back with a June POM. We love you all. Thank you. Good night. Happy sewing from Silhouette Patterns. Bye.